Severe storms strike again. Tonight, thousands more families in the dark. Warned power could be out for days. Backup arrives to help clean up a week of destruction. The forecast not looking good for New Year's Eve. A dramatic citizen's arrest after a driver smashes into a Gold Coast service station. Dozens dead as Ukraine is pummeled by the biggest Russian bombardment of the war. An unexpected wild card clears the courts at the Brisbane International. And from the stadium to the stage and sky, your guide to the big shows and blockbuster events set for the southeast in 2024. This is Nine News Queensland. Good evening to you. The South East can't catch a break at the moment, can it? After seven days of severe storms, giant hail, destructive winds and relentless rain have once again smashed the region. The wild weather today plunging more families into the dark, with thousands still waiting for power to be restored from days ago. The clean-up mission is now so massive, help has been called in from interstate. Our team of reporters is live tonight for you right across the South East with very latest information and New Year's warnings, Olivana Lathoris begins our coverage. From one end of the coast to the other and across the Darling Downs, Mother Nature unleashing her wrath. Communities still scrambling to recover from wild weather earlier in the week, watching on with dread as another round of storms rolled in. In Tara, balls of ice the size of golf balls smashing homes and cars. Wind gusts in excess of 90 kilometres an hour recorded at Gympie, the Burham on the Sunshine Coast recording 110 millimetres of rain in just two hours. Flash flooding at Gold Coast theme parks giving new meaning to the name wet and wild. A lightning bolt even taking out a chunk of a building in Coolangatta. In Jimboomba, a man lucky to be alive after a tree fell and crushed his tractor. These storms are popping up, they are short notice and they are moving through an area quite quickly. More than 15,000 Thousand homes plunged into darkness from Gympie to Clontarf. Destructive winds and lightning bringing down 65 power lines. More than 36,000 homes now without electricity across the state. Those storms today could well delay those reconnection timeframes. The first priority has to be the safety of our emergency service paid and volunteer staff as well as our energy workers. Families told they'd have the lights back on for New Year's Eve, now unlikely to be reconnected connected until Friday. We're going as fast as we humanly can. Reinforcements from New South Wales and Victoria deployed to support the recovery efforts as clean-up crews face an uphill battle with more storms and flash flooding forecast. We do have a flood watch that has been issued for numerous catchments across central and southeast Queensland and that will remain in place for the next few days while this thunderstorm activity remains with us. The Bureau this week under intense scrutiny, the government announcing a review into possible gaps in the nation's emergency warning system. Every single disaster we've reviewed and sought to get better. With more dangerous weather predicted over the coming days, council offering free sandbags from several locations across Greater Brisbane, residents urged to prepare their homes now. Hopes of ending the year on a high clouded with uncertainty. Let's go straight to Olivana Lathoris now. Ollie, good evening to you. Emergency warnings remain in place for parts of the state tonight. What can you tell us? Good evening, Wendy. Yes, still many parts of Queensland very much on high alert for thunderstorms. There are general warnings in place for large parts of the state. They do include Wide Bay, Burnett, the Central Highlands, Central West, Darling Downs and the southeast coast. There is also a flood watch in place for the Condamine catchment as well as more catchments south of Rockhampton down toward the New South Wales border. As we've seen in Brisbane over just the last 48 hours, conditions can go from 40 degrees and burning hot sun to storms and pouring rain the next. So the conditions really are changing hour by hour, which is why it is so important that residents right across Queensland are really keeping up to date with those warnings as they roll through over the next 24 hours. Wendy? Indeed, Ollie, thank you. Abby Guerin is at Emergency Service Headquarters where the disaster response is being coordinated from. Abby, uh, still a massive clean-up ahead. 
There is, Wendy. I'm joined by QFES Acting Commissioner Stephen Smith now. Stephen, thank you so much for your time. We've heard today that there have been about 3,800 calls to SES since Christmas Day. About 800 of those remain outstanding. What should residents do if their job hasn't been assigned yet? Yeah, look, as you can understand, there's a lot of work out there. So, and those jobs are still coming in. But rest assured, reassure the community, we are out there doing that work as quickly as we can, working through the backlog. What people can do is operate within their means. So if they're confident there isn't hazards out there and it's within their means to do the work, start to do that work. Our crews will get there as soon as they can and then um, they'll be able to apply those skills to do the things you can't do. What extra assistance are crews getting to manage this huge workload? Yes, we've had um, well over 300 on the ground today um, and that includes um, you know, volunteers from State Emergency Service, Rural Fire Service volunteers, uh, our fire and rescue personnel and our disaster assistance response team is in the field. We've also got 42 um, State Emergency Service personnel from New South Wales on the ground today. Uh, this evening coming in tonight is uh, 88 personnel from Victoria who are going to be on the ground tomorrow, again boost our resources and give us that capacity to move through that backlog of calls and support the community to the best of our ability. That'll be great to have those extra boots on the ground. Thank you so much for your time, Stephen. Uh, Wendy, there have been about 2,000 homes assessed for damage so far. Six of those have been totally destroyed. We hope that number doesn't rise uh, over the coming days. Indeed. Abby, thank you very much for that. Let's go straight now to Bronte Gilday. Bronte's at Burley Heads for us this evening. Bronte, uh, tell us, how's the New Year's Eve forecast shaping up? Well, showers and storms, Wendy. We are going to see those storms moving uh, further north to the central coast area. Charters Towers all the way down to Emerald is where we might see some giant hail and heavy rain, and that's why we have seen that flood watch issued. It's also uh, been issued into Brisbane and all the way down to us here on the Gold Coast, so we will keep a close eye on that. As for what's ahead for the New Year's forecast, well, we can only hope we see any electric storms in the early afternoon so as to not affect uh, the fireworks displays that will be on, but definitely plan for wet weather, Wendy, if you are coming to enjoy those fireworks. And we will have showers into the early parts of next week. I'll have that full weather forecast coming up for you very soon. Thanks, Bronte. Some people behind you are already enjoying themselves. And despite the concerning weather Bronte just talked about, we're still expecting tens of thousands to descend on the city to ring in the new year tomorrow night. Let's go live now to Isabel Quinlan at uh, Kangaroo Point. Izzy, what do we need to know ahead of the big day? Wendy, there's a few things to keep in mind because it's going to be very busy despite the weather conditions. More than 100,000 people are expected to descend on South Bank and its surrounding areas. There will be a number of road closures, as you can see on your screen, in North Brisbane. Adelaide, William, George Street. They'll be closed from 5pm. In the south of the city, quite a few streets there around the Convention Centre. They will be closed from around 4pm. But all streets are expected to open around two, at 2pm. Two so we us uh, 2 a.m. Sorry. So we are being encouraged to use public transport. It will be free across the southeast from 8 p.m. tomorrow until 5:30 on New Year's Day. Services will run every 15 minutes. It's looking very similar on the Gold Coast. There'll be extra trams and they'll be running every seven minutes. But what you really want to know is the best vantage points to see the fireworks. There'll be two shows: one at 8:30 and, of course, at midnight. The best viewing locations, of course, around the South Bank area, Howard Smith Wharf and Wilson's Lookout, another good option, as well as where I am tonight here, Wendy, at Kangaroo Point. So there's plenty of options to ring in the new year with a bang. Wendy, have a happy new year. You too, and let's hope that rain stays away. Thank you very much for that, Izzy. Well, a dramatic citizen's arrest unfolded outside a Gold Coast petrol station. Witnesses pouncing on a man behind the wheel of a ute after it ploughed through the front window. They claim he was hooning only moments earlier, the vehicle narrowly missing fuel bowsers and people when it crashed. Leaving debris in its tracks and a Labrador service station in tatters. Is everyone all right in here? Yeah. Yeah. He didn't get hurt, did he? It's remarkable no one was seriously injured when this Holden Ute speared straight through the front entrance of the 7-Eleven on Frank Street. No. So this massive boom, like this massive crash of bins and metal and glass. The 22-year-old driver visibly dazed and pinned down by bystanders in a citizen's arrest. He was doing maybe a burnout or something. He'd clipped a traffic island, losing control and sideswiping a taxi before the almighty crash around 10.15 this morning. You're not going anywhere, yeah, mate. I don't know whether you're waking up yet. Thankfully, missing fuel bowsers, customers and the workers inside. 
a lot of people were shaken up, um, standing around the place. There was a couple of people, I think, were sitting in the bus stop here when it happened. But the shattered windscreen reveals the sheer force of the impact. Paramedics taking the Paradise Point man to hospital. He's since been released and investigations are continuing. Abby Geeran, Nine News. Two fathers have now been identified as the victims of a shocking holiday crash outside of Sydney. Tonight, a number of their children are still in a serious condition in hospital as police try to work out exactly how that tragedy unfolded. David Drozd, his wife Nicole and five of his nine children were on the way to Dubbo to visit their eldest daughter when the family's Kia Carnival collided head-on with a D-Max ute towing a bike trailer on the Great Western Highway near Willerawang. The 49-year-old father was killed, so too the driver of the D-Max, 43-year-old Jason McMahon from Norellan Vale, who'd spent the day riding trail bikes at Sunny Corner. Our hearts go out to you know, the families and the communities that those people are part of. Jason's 19-year-old son, Connor, told Nine News, I've lost the man I've always wanted to become. He was the sort of person to just drop everything to go help someone. I'm going to miss my dad every minute. He didn't get to see me start a family of my own. Five vehicles were involved in the crash. 15 people were injured, including Jason's passenger, 19-year-old family friend Declan Jones. Five children are in hospital in Westmead. Two of David's daughters are in a serious and critical condition. And we're calling on the community to actually, particularly in this New Year's period, to stop and think about um, what they do to prepare uh, on their journey. The stretch of highway on Mount Lambie is notorious for accidents. A crash involving a truck and sedan killed two people in 2021. Another man lost his life after his ute was hit by a truck in 2018. Police are probing all sorts of theories as to why Jason's ute crossed onto the wrong side of the road, including speed, a medical episode or even a micro-sleep after a long day of riding. David was an experienced traffic safety consultant working throughout Western Sydney. He was due to become a grandfather next year. His family have described him as a devoted Christian and loving father of nine children, sharing this photo taken on Christmas Day. James Wilson, Nine News. Let's head overseas now. And nearly two years on from the start of its invasion, Russia has launched its biggest missile bombardment yet. At least 30 people were killed and more than 160 injured as Ukraine's biggest cities came under attack. Ukraine under assault. Russian drones and missiles fired at homes and buildings. On the streets, cries of panic, the onslaught striking in the capital, Kyiv, where survivors were pulled from the flames. In Kharkiv, this man was rescued from rubble. Almost two years into the war, Russia is sending a message and Ukrainians are sending one back. You this woman cries, standing in the ruins of her own home. Dozens of people were killed, scores more injured in attacks across the country. In Dnipro, this man says, When the shell landed, we sat here in the corner. My wife and child were terrified. In Lviv in the west, the mayor says, We are showing what these non-humans do. Her son, the port city of Odessa and Zaporizhia, also all targeted. Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, went to the front line. Thanking soldiers. These are the people who keep Ukraine alive, he says, urging world leaders to respond with help. This Russian military leader wished his troops further successes. And this war has another worrying development. Polish officials say a missile likely from Russia entered its airspace. An attack on Poland, a NATO nation, could trigger a much wider war. And with that in mind, US President Joe Biden warned America could be dragged directly into the conflict as he issued a scathing verbal assault on Vladimir Putin and a plea to Congress to get tens of billions of dollars worth of military aid to Ukraine. When dictators and autocrats are allowed to run roughshod in Europe, consequences reverberate around the world. Putin seeks to obliterate Ukraine. He must be stopped, President Biden said. Tonight, in Kyiv, some shelter underground. Yet Viga 
tries to keep her daughter smiling. Children are scared too, she says, and there's little sign of a path to peace. In the United States, Jonathan Kersley, Nine News. Back home now and dozens of councils are tonight defending their unofficial boycott of Australia Day that will see some formalities shifted away from January 26. The opposition claims it undermines our National Day, but the government says it has no intention of changing the date. <laughs> Becoming Australian on our National Day is a long-standing tradition. In choosing Australia as their home, these newest citizens are embracing the values and qualities we hold dear. But it's one many local councils are now choosing to reject. If we aren't prepared to hold citizenship ceremonies on our National Day, what are we prepared to do on our National Day. Around 80 councils nationwide are ditching citizenship ceremonies on January 26, the highest number in Victoria and New South Wales. It is very much about respect and it is also about working towards reconciliation in whatever small ways we can. The City of Sydney Council is another, saying January 26 is painful for so many. It's not a day of unity, but of mourning. But not everyone's happy with their council's decision. What better day to welcome new Australians than on Australia Day? The surge away from formalities on January 26 comes a year after the Albanese government gave councils a choice in the matter, reversing a 2017 mandate that saw some local governments stripped of hosting rights altogether. Councils should be required to hold citizenship ceremonies on Australia Day and that policy is one that we would reintroduce uh, if we were re-elected. The opposition accusing Labor of moving to change the date by stealth even though the Prime Minister has consistently backed Australia Day. Eliza Edwards, Nine News. Destructive inferno still ahead tonight. A family loses everything just weeks after moving in. A race against time, 100 people trapped on ice. Also ahead tonight, Tesla troubles. Police called to an out-of-control cyber car crash. And at the end of sport, from the stadium to the stage and sky, your guide to the South East's jam-packed calendar in 2024. A young family has lost everything, waking up to an inferno tearing through their Coomera house this morning. The family of six moved in just weeks ago. Now they're homeless. Black smoke billowing. I don't want my house to burn down. Oh my God. Neighbours using hoses doing what they could until help arrived. That three to five minutes it took the fireys felt like forever. We've been here 20 years and, you know, that's everything in there for our house. So we didn't want to lose all that as well. So it's horrible. My wife was hysterical. Thankfully, the family of six and their pets got out. First thing people said to us is they're out, they're safe. They were in the back, trapped in the backyard, um, which is a big backyard, so they had plenty of room, but it was, it was frightening. Multiple fire crews quick to get the blaze under control. On arrival, the house was fully involved, um, mainly isolated to the kitchen area and um, reports were that there was a phone had been left on charge. The house has been declared a crime scene while the cause of the blaze is under investigation. Neighbours say the family had only just moved in three weeks ago. All six were taken to hospital and treated for smoke inhalation. It's decimated a house, um, a family, Christmas, you know, we've had... No power here, there's obviously people doing it tough everywhere and this is the icing on the cake for these people who have only just got power on as well. Their home tonight, a crime scene. Yasmin Bunnell, Nine News. An immense effort from rescuers has saved a group of 122 fishermen who found themselves stranded when a sheet of ice broke free in the US state of Minnesota. Around 10 metres offshore in freezing conditions, it made for a delicate mission. It's at least the fifth ice rescue on the same lake in the past week. 
Tesla's electric SUV Cybertruck has been involved in its first known accident in the US and the Toyota Corolla it crashed into has come off much worse for wear. Launched back in November, Tesla CEO Elon Musk claims the vehicle is virtually indestructible. Automotive experts have expressed concerns over the safety of pedestrians and other cars because of its weight and high acceleration. Their claims Musk refutes. Southeast suburbs soaring tonight. The real estate hotspots about to boom in value. From the coast to the city, your 2024 real estate guide is just ahead. Erupting into flames, a terrifying explosion at a hazardous waste plant. Also tonight, the 100 kilogram secret hidden in these machines. And a slippery wild card stops play at the Brisbane International. Welcome back. Two men have now been charged after 100 kilograms of methamphetamine was found hidden in imported farm machinery. Police raided two properties in Victoria, seizing drug lab items at both locations. It's believed the men are associated with Afghani organised crime groups. If convicted, they could face life behind bars. Israel is accusing South Africa of collaborating with Hamas after the country launched a genocide case against Israel at the International Court of Justice. It comes as Hamas says it will consider an Egyptian plan for a ceasefire that would ultimately end the war in Gaza. Yahya Sinwar is one of Israel's top targets inside Gaza and the Israeli military claims it's just destroyed the Hamas leader's hideout. Releasing footage of troops inside tunnels, it says, are part of Hamas general headquarters as the terror group claims its delegation in Cairo will now consider an Egyptian plan for a ceasefire. South Africa has filed a genocide case against Israel at the UN's top court, something Israel rejects as baseless blood libel, while an Israeli official has admitted Christmas Eve's deadly airstrike on the Megazi refugee camp, which killed more than 100, was a mistake, stopping short of an apology. This was a regrettable mistake. This should not have happened. The choice of munition was incorrect. It's estimated 85% of Gaza's residents have now been forced from their homes, tents stretching as far as the eye can see around the southern city of Rafa, where an estimated 100,000 people have fled in recent days. That's according to the UN. Denmark says it'll send a warship to join the US-led coalition in the Red Sea, established after increasing attacks by the Houthi rebels of Yemen, whose capital saw huge protests in support port of Gaza today. The crowds chanting Jihad, Jihad, all the people are ready. In London, Karianne Greenbank, Nine News. A delivery of chemicals has gone very wrong in the US state of Connecticut, a hazardous waste plant exploding. The blast saw homes evacuated, the area locked down and three people injured, one treated for burns and the others smoke inhalation. The biggest concern for authorities is now the potential spread of toxic fumes. Well, the Brisbane International is off to an unusual start, with tennis officials having to deal with snake invasions. A tiny but deadly serpent forced play to be suspended, and fortunately, would you believe it, there was a snake catcher nearby. Rafael Nadal is the star attraction, but a wild card stole all the attention after slithering into the Brisbane International. Uh, he's an Eastern Brown. Uh, he is the second most venomous snake in the world. Spotted by spectators watching qualifying on an outside court, officials suspended play and called in local snake catcher Lucas. I was literally driving to my other job. They'd put a tarp down, so he'd gone under the tarp. He'd call himself up under there obviously trying to keep himself safe, just chilling out, trying to get away from the big crowd, I think. With the serpent safely captured, <laughs> Lucas took a video so family would believe his story when he gets home tonight. My wife is a massive tennis fan. Um, we actually have tickets for next Saturday and Sunday. Um, and when I texted her, go, I'm going to pick up a snake from the Brisbane International, she went, no way, get me, an, get me an autograph. Maybe Rafa will oblige. Now he's the headline act once again. There's a snake that raised a racket at the tennis slides back into anonymity. Adam Jackson, Nine News. Oh, that is brilliant. Well, stay with us. Too hot to handle. The chips so spicy, factory workers are actually getting sick.
plus remembering the stars and the sporting heroes we lost this year. And the southeast suburbs where value is about to boom. Chip giant Smith's has been forced to install extra fans at this Adelaide factory after workers said they had difficulty breathing and were experiencing skin irritation dealing with seasoning used to make flaming hot Doritos. The United Workers Union says employees at the factory raised significant safety concerns. PepsiCo, which owns Smith's, says it's mandatory to wear a mask during a production of that particular chip. In 2023, we said goodbye to a passing parade of public figures. They made us sing, they made us laugh and cry. And tonight, we're paying tribute to those we lost. It was the year when we lost living legends. They found me a better seat. <laughs> Be it Dame Edna, Celez or Barry himself, Humphreys was sheer entertainment, a rare talent that we already miss. You may not know this expression, but I am going commando tonight. <laughs> Sir Michael Parkinson passed away this year at the age of 88. 2023 was also the year when some of the most beloved voices fell silent. Yes, the good life, to be free and explore the unknown including Tina Turner herself. The world was shocked when news broke that Matthew Perry was found dead in his backyard spa. The troubled star was just 54. I'm going to hug you. You hug me. All right. <laughs> Sadly, the small screen and the silver screen lost many of its stars who'd entertained us for generations. Raquel Welch. Gina Lola Brigida. Someday I'll say goodbye and you won't hear that either. And Ryan O'Neill. Did you happen to know that I, I love you? Yeah. The talented Harry Belafonte also. Oh, island in the sun. Only a few weeks ago, Henry Kissinger died, the final chapter in an extraordinary 100 years. Back in January of this year, the king was reunited with his princess. Lisa Marie Presley was found dead. The daughter of Elvis was only 55. Back home, one of the most respected leaders in the indigenous community passed away, Yunapingu. Throughout his public life, he fought passionately for land rights. Cal Wilson was one of our most popular comedians. She succumbed to a rare form of cancer at only 53. Tears too for a man with a heart of gold. We happened to put the poor first. Father Bob Maguire dedicated his life to fighting for the underdog. On April 30 of this year, it was revealed that TV chef Jock Zonfrillo had been found dead. It prompted an outpouring of emotion from those who'd worked with him and those who simply admired him. Welcome to the Master Chef Kitchen! Renee Geyer was the solstress of Australian music, and her music said it all. Federal Parliament was as one in paying tribute to its own. Senator Jim Molan, former Labor leader Simon Crean and Peter Murphy, who'd waged a long battle with breast cancer. She was just 50. Long-time Victorian Minister Tom Roper also passed away, as did former Queensland Premier Micah Hearn. Overseas, the sisterhood of First Ladies came together to farewell Rosalind Carter, the wife of former President Jimmy Carter. And the music world raised a glass to Jimmy Buffett. The musical genius that was Bird Bacharach 
was adored to the end. His works, through artists like Dionne Warwick, were music to the ears of the world. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. No, not just for some, but for everyone. Tony Jones, Nine News. So many talented people. We'll stay with the sports after the break, including the new favourite to replace Dave Warner in the Aussie Test team. The Brisbane International Draw revealed when you can catch Rafael Nadal on court. We'll tell you about that. And then at the end of sport, the blockbuster events set for the South East in 2024. And it was a little bit gloomy down here in Burley Heads a little bit earlier, but the wind has died, the sun has come out, and there's a game of beach rugby going on in the background. We'll have your full forecast coming up not far away. Test selectors are zeroing in on David Warner's successor with revelations Cameron Green is in the mix to open for Australia. As the Aussies now turn their attention to Sydney, Pakistan is still seething at how the second test ended. Closing out the year with another gripping victory. The past 12 months are worth savouring for Australia's cricketers. The success we've had, we're measured by uh, wins and losses and, and titles and it's, yeah, I consider it right up there. Family time on the cards today after earning the day off, thanks in part to the captain's brilliance. Ten for the match for Patrick Cummins. Yeah, it's a joy to watch, really. So too David Warner's career. Warner. And with the curtain to fall after Wednesday's test SCG cricket. test, it's time to find a replacement. There's four candidates, but only one spot. Cameron Bancroft's case helped by his brilliant shield form, while Matt Renshaw and Marcus Harris aren't without merit. But it's all round to Cameron Green, who looms as the outside chance, despite not being a traditional opener. I mean, Cameron Green um, could, as a discussion around who were the best six batters, definitely been the conversation. So while Australia look to the future, Pakistan is still fuming at the past. Coach Mohamed Afiz lashing out post-match, particularly incensed by the dismissal of Mohamed Rizwan off his wristband. Our Pakistan team played better than the other team. I believe inconsistent umpiring, technology curse, really given us the result which should have been different. The Aussie squad departs for Sydney tomorrow. Braden Ingram, Nine News. With Usman Khawaja and Marcus Labashain on test duties, Nathan McSweeney is doing an impressive job filling in for the heat in the Big Bash. After top scoring in Brisbane's last win, he's primed for Monday's clash with the Sixers, which is set to attract the biggest Gabba crowd for a BBL game in four years. It's why we train, it's why we do all the hard work, because you want to play in front of people. It's pretty special. Not many people get to do it, so we're really fortunate. And yeah, hopefully we can just keep the fans happy while winning and um, more turn out. The New Year's Day encounter will have a party-like atmosphere with international music acts to be part of the entertainment at the Gabba. Well, the Brisbane International begins with a bang tomorrow with Rafael Nadal on centre court, ending his year-long absence from tennis. While Andy Murray faces a daunting round one assignment after being spurred on by an Olympic gold medalist from Queensland. Rafael Nadal always draws a crowd, an impromptu hit with Andy Murray, even drawing the attention of Olympic swimming champion Ariane Titmus. Top seed Holger Rune gained an insight in a practice match against Nadal before his highly anticipated comeback at the Brisbane International. I thought he played unbelievable, and that was probably the hardest practice I've had the last half year, I would say. Tomorrow, the Spaniard, who's been plagued by a hip injury, plays his first competitive match in almost a year. Physically, he looked, looked good and it was playing well. Andy Murray faces a daunting round one assignment, going up against world number 14, Grigor Dimitrov, which will be a rematch of the 2013 Brisbane International final that the pair fought out here. I really don't remember a whole lot about the match. I used to remember everything about my matches, like up until I had kids and I've literally, my memory's gone. Australian Open champion Arena Sabalenka, part of a star-studded women's draw. Naomi Osaka returning after taking time out to focus on motherhood and mental health. I'm a lot more open-minded and a lot more patient because I felt like all my joy went away for the sport and I felt like 
it kind of wasn't fair, both for the people watching and myself. Adam Jackson, Nine News. Well, Australia is off to a shaky start at the United Cup, losing both men's and women's singles matches against Great Britain during the opening round in Perth. Alex Dimonor succumbing in a third set tiebreaker to world number 18 Cameron Norrie. United Cup matches are also being played in Sydney, where the Greek team opted to take some time out from training today to make a special visit to Taronga Zoo. Major League Baseball scouts from the US are paying close attention to the Brisbane Bandits with several players in the sights of American teams. The Bandits extended their outstanding start to the Australian League with a 9-7 win over the Sydney Blue Sox. It puts Brisbane in a tie for first on the competition standings 25 games into the season. Well, from our stadiums to the stage, even the sky, 2024 is shaping up to be an exciting year for the South East. Abby Guerin breaks down the blockbuster calendar of events coming our way. It's going to be an action-packed start to the year for the South East. The Brisbane International starts tomorrow, the world's best battling it out for the next week. Then Brisbane Heat takes over the Gabba before the Gabba Test. The Magic Millions Carnival hits the Gold Coast, then AFL fans flock in for opening round in March. 2024 also brings an impressive lineup of global music royalty. Pink and Blink-182 in February, the Jonas Brothers in March, Niall Horan in in April. Then in May, a four-day festival of football kicking off with Game 1 of Women's State of Origin at Suncorp for the first time ever, followed by NRL Magic Round. In July, we're hosting the State of Origin Potential Decider, Game 3 at Suncorp Stadium, then Brisbane's biggest party of the year, River Fire, marking the start of the Brisbane Festival. More excitement in the back half of the year, putting the South East on the world stage in August. The world's first Bluey's World opens at North Shore. An epic three-day air show will take over the Gold Coast again. And the Australian PGA Championship returns to Brisbane in late November. A massive year ahead for the South East, starting with a bang tomorrow night. So much ahead. Well, in just three minutes' time from the city to the coast, your guide to what's in store for 2024. The southeast suburbs about to boom. What you need to know is just moments away. But first, Bronte Gilday is back with a check of the weather for us. Bronte, a lovely night down there. Can we expect the same tomorrow? Oh, Wendy, we're not too sure at this stage for tomorrow, but tonight it's turned into a beautiful sunset from what was supposed to be a pretty gloomy day. The kids are certainly enjoying it. We can only hope we see the same thing tomorrow for New Year's. House prices across the southeast soared to record highs in 2023 and experts are making bold predictions for the year ahead. With 2024 just around the corner, tonight we can reveal the suburbs set to boom. Defying expectations and despite 13 rate rises, real estate records were smashed in 2023. It's been a great year. There's still been lots of good solid price growth. Demand is very strong. So what's in store for 2024? Prices continuing to skyrocket. Experts predicting Brisbane house values could soar by up to 8% next year. The suburbs expected to boom. Chermside, Stafford, Jindalee, Murray, Clontarf, Wollongabba and acreage areas like Pullen Vale and Chandler. On the Gold Coast, the more affordable suburbs are likely to see more growth, including Pimpama, Coomera, Ormo and Labrador. The median house price in Brisbane is now sitting at over a million dollars. And so that's pretty frightening. It is still possible to find a hidden gem there and a bit of a bargain, but there's no doubt that you have to be looking very carefully. The advice to buyers is to keep an open mind when looking at properties, try neighbouring suburbs near your preferred location or consider purchasing a townhouse unit or apartment. But most importantly, buy what you can afford. Do your due diligence and really property will serve you well provided that you are clever about where you invest. Isabel Quinlan, Nine News. It is time now for our full weather forecast. Bronte, how much rain are we expecting for New Year's Eve? 
Well, 90 millimetres, uh, sorry, 90 percent chance of rain here on the Gold Coast and in Brisbane. Only 20 millimetres expected in the gauge in both locations. But up a little bit further north today, take a look at the radar. We can see that storm activity moving over, over north of Caloundra, uh, over Harvey Bay, which recorded about 32 millimetres, but terrifying for the people underneath all of that thunder and lightning. Now, let's have a look at temperatures across the southeast today. 10 degrees cooler than what we saw in Brisbane yesterday. Just 28, 29 on the border, 33 in Gympie and 29 on the Sunshine Coast. Taking a look at the map now, you can see that trough bringing the wet weather to us here on the east coast. Behind that, a surface trough dragging moisture into the southern parts of the country. Around the grounds for New Year's Eve, sunny for, uh, for most of Australia, except for us here in Queensland, unfortunately. A top of 31 in Perth and 26 in Adelaide, 21 for Melbourne, cloudy and 22 for the capital, while Darwin will have storms in a top of 35 degrees. Back at home, North Queensland should dodge the rain for New Year's. Tops of 34 in Townsville, which might catch a bit of that shower activity, but partly cloudy and 33 for Cairns. Showers for the Whit Sundays and thunderstorms for the Capricornia, Wide Bay and Burnett regions as the storm activity moves north. While out west, it will be sunny and 43 degrees in Longreach. For us in southeast Queensland, we'll have the remnants of that storm system hanging over. Um, some showers for the Sunshine Coast all the way down to us here on the Goldie. And as I mentioned earlier, a chance of some scattered thunderstorms throughout the day, so keep an eye on that changing forecast. On the bay, southerly and 10 knots tending south to, uh, south to southeasterly with winds up to 20 knots in the evening for the city tomorrow. Still the chance of a thunderstorm and showers throughout the day. The heat hanging around a little, the top of 31 and pretty humid. Looking ahead, no end in sight for those showers, cooling down a little for New Year's Day, but we'll see those temperatures increasing again toward the end of next week with a top of 33 for Thursday. Not much different in Ipswich, up to 35 degrees forecast for Thursday. For us here on the coast, a soggy New Year's Day and tops of 27. Not the beach cricket kind of weather we've been hoping for. Possible thunderstorms around then as well. As for you on the Sunshine Coast, storms persisting until Monday with a top of 27 and then warming up again into next week. As for what's happening out on the water, let's take a look at the beaches forecast. Clean conditions across the coast this morning. Too bad there wasn't a lot of action. Small at Burley, a couple of two-footers coming through with a few keen surfers having a crack. D-Bar struggling to get any size as well. A little bit of chop early with light variable winds. For the swimmers, make sure you're keeping between the flags. Water temps around 24 degrees. Looking ahead, that southerly change should see conditions improving in the early parts of next week. Definitely worth keeping an eye on. Early will be the pick. Head to the southern magnets, which will draw a little more size. For the Bodies, light winds and calm this morning, but those storms spoiling the fun from the Goldie all the way up the coast. Light variable winds tomorrow morning and seas one to two metres, but definitely keep an eye on that storm forecast. Now here's weatherman Luke Bradnam out doing what he does best. That's why you're hearing my voice this weekend and not his. Picking up this long tail tuna at 1770. Good on you, Luke. Let's Let's hope Luke out on the water can ditch his rain jacket and I can ditch mine as well tomorrow night for the New Year's celebrations. <laughs> yeah, indeed. And well done, Luke. Good stuff. Thank you, Bronte. And that is Nine News Queensland this Saturday. Thanks so much for your company. Dimity Clancy is next with The Current Affair. Have a great evening. Good night.